Critical Role just kicked off their eight episode campaign Exandria Unlimited that features a brand new set of heroes and Abria Iyengard as the DM. Sitting in the player seat this time around is Matt Mercer and he introduced a dwarf divine soul sorcerer that has captured the hearts of the viewers. His character Dariax is a fun and unique build that is a shining example of a concept forward character build. This video is a little different from my usual character builds. I will be taking a look at Matthew Mercer's build for Dariax, look at his choices, and what direction I would take this build to level 10 if you want to play a dwarf divine soul sorcerer inspired by the character. Hello welcome to Dungeoneers Pack, a channel bringing you player focused discussions and character guides for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. My name is Josh, thank you for watching. Even though this video is a bit different from my usual character build videos, from levels 3 to 10, I will be following my character build guidelines. I'm going to focus on levels 1 to 10 as most campaigns are played in this level range. The goal of the build will be to fulfill the concept but also be viable for combat and roleplay. I will be covering the features in race, class, and background choices that make the build possible. And ability scores will not be defined as each table decides how ability scores are calculated. Instead, I will provide a ranking as to which ability scores you should prioritize for the build. Matt Mercer's Dariax is a lovable dwarf scoundrel that is easygoing with a love for pranks, especially those done to him by his friends. He's not above committing crimes, especially if it's to get a one-up on those that have done others wrong. There is still much left to be revealed about the character, so let's take a look at Matt Mercer's choices for the build. Based on what we've seen so far, Dariax is a Mountain Dwarf that uses the origin variant rules from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Mountain Dwarf is a strong pick for any player option with these rules as they will add plus 2 to 2 ability scores and give a character armor proficiencies that bump up their defenses. For Dariax's class and subclass, he is a Divine Soul Sorcerer, but so far it hasn't been revealed what deity he could be tied to. Hopefully this gets revealed as the series progresses. What we do know is that Dariax is acquainted with the Thieves Guild and has a criminal past he often alludes to, so for his background, he is most likely a criminal. When it comes to the character's party roles, in combat he is a strong support character relying heavily on cleric spells to protect the party. And out of combat, he stepped in to help negotiate on the group's behalf which cements him as the party face. From what we know about the ability scores for Dariax, Matt Mercer used point by in combination with Tasha's origin rules. He prioritized charisma putting one of the plus two bonuses there to support the character's sorcerer features and spells. Based on the point by, Mercer put equal points into dexterity and strength which gives him the option to put Dariax in the middle of combat. Dexterity will help out with his armor class and initiative while strength helps out with his melee attacks. Constitution is then prioritized for some solid hit points and with the point by, Mercer dumped wisdom and intelligence. For skills, from what we know, Dariax's criminal background will give him deception and stealth. Another skill that's been featured is Persuasion, which comes from the Sorcerer class. It hasn't been revealed what other skill he's invested in from the class, but there are a few other options remaining. He can choose from Arcana, Insight, Intimidation, or Religion. From an optimization standpoint, Intimidation complements his ability score focus, but based on the character's personality, he doesn't tend to be aggressive, so it makes me think he went with another skill. I can see Matt Mercer choosing Religion for Dariax to add some depth to the character and tying it into the subclass. Getting to the level by level breakdown is going to be slightly different from what I normally do. For the first two levels, we're going to be looking at the initial options Matt Mercer chose for Dariax and I will be filling in some blanks on potential options he may have taken or offer suggestions that I believe fit with the character. For the remaining levels, I will be offering suggestions on what to do with this build. Just a disclaimer, this is all guesswork based on what we've seen on the show so far and my interpretation of the character. With that said, starting at level 1, Dariax has a mighty list of proficiencies from his race and class. As a dwarf, he has dark vision, dwarven resilience, and stone cunning. For armor, match choice of mountain door shores up a defensive weakness in the sorcerer, giving him proficiency in light and medium armors. When it comes to weapon proficiencies, Dariax has a bunch of singular options, but most importantly, he is proficient with a spear. With the variant origin rules, any of the proficiencies with axes or hammers for being a dwarf can simply be changed to a spear. Looking at tool proficiencies, we know Dariax is capable of using thieves tools, and since he's a criminal, he is proficient in a gaming set. As a dwarf, there's an option to choose proficiency in smith's tools, brewer supplies, or mason's tools. We have no clue which option was chosen and it may not be something that is important to the character. And for saving throws, Dariax is proficient in constitution and charisma. As a divine soul sorcerer, at level 1 he has the spell casting, divine magic, and favored by the gods features. Favored by the gods helps make missed saving throws or attacks, and Divine Magic expands Dariax's spell options by giving him full access to the Cleric spell list alongside the Sorcerer spell list. Since Dariax is chaotic neutral, as part of Divine Magic he will have access to a spell based on alignment. It's not certain which spell, but it could be either Bane or Protection from Evil and Good. Looking at the rest of Dariax's spells, Matt pulled exclusively from the Cleric spell list. For cantrips, Dariax has Light, Sacred Flame, and Thaumaturgy. 
and for first level spells, we know he has Bless and Cure Wounds. With level 2, Dayax will have Fauna Magic, which gives him access to Sorcery Points, which at this point will only be able to be spent to replenish spell slots. In addition to this, he will have an additional level 1 spell, but it hasn't been revealed yet as to which spell it is. Given that Matt has been heavily leaning into the Cleric spells for the list, my guess is that he could have taken Guiding Bolt or Shield of Faith. If you are looking to be inspired by this build, the Sorcerer list has some great spell options as well. Some spells from the Sorcerer list that I could see fitting with Dariax's personality could be Chromatic Orb, Comprehend Languages, and Command. From this point forward, I'm taking the reins and giving you suggestions as to which options to take this character to level 10. At level 3, Meta Magic and level 2 spells become available to us. Meta Magic offers an amount of flexibility and control over the spells we can cast. At this level we can choose 2, so here are my recommendations you should consider. Quicken Spell to cast a spell as a bonus action, Twin Spell to target 2 creatures with a spell that can only target 1 creature, Empower Spell to reroll damage dice, and Transmute a Spell to change the damage type of our spells. For level 2 spells, here are some options I consider that fit Dariax's personality or just generally good. Calm Emotions, Hold Person, Spiritual Weapon, Invisibility, Knock, Misty Step, and Shatter. Next at level 4 we have the option between an ability score increase or a feat and I'd say go for the ability score increase. Despite the well-rounded ability scores, Dariax is still a sorcerer and getting charisma to 20 will support the character's spellcasting. For level 5 we get access to 3rd level spells and here are my recommendations. Aura of Vitality, Dispel Magic, Revivify, Spirit Guardians, Counterspell, Dispel Magic, Haste, and Slow. With level 6, we get the Empowered Healing feature, which will help us or any nearby alley reroll dice for any healing spell they receive. When we hit level 7, we get access to 4th level spells and here are my recommendations. Banishment, Death Ward, Charm Monster, Greater Invisibility, and Polymorph. At level 8, we get the option to choose between an Ability Score Increase or Feet again, and again, go with the Ability Score Increase. Keep putting those points into Charisma to make it hit 20. Hitting level 9 gets us access to 5th level spells and here are my recommendations. Greater Restoration, Mass Cure Wounds, Big V's Hand, and Hold Monster. And finally for level 10, we pick up another meta magic option. Choose one that you didn't pick up from the list I suggested at level 3. Choose from Quicken Spell, Twin Spell, Empowered Spell, or Transmuted Spell. Dariax is a wonderful example of building a character that is concept forward. Matt Mercer has crafted a unique and deeply entertaining character with an unconventional build. It has been discussed to death the possible negative impact the origin variant role can have on the game. It is no secret that when using this role, the Mountain Dwarf is a powerful player option. The armor proficiencies and flexibility granted to the ability score placement from the role is a strong chassis to build around. Even knowing this, Matt Mercer built Dariax in such a fashion that he was not optimized for his class but still viable for his role in the party. If you look at the point by, this is even more evident as he didn't try to optimize his charisma score and dumped all his mental stats. Instead, he built a sturdy dwarf character who has a criminal past which his strength and dexterity scores help reflect. Dariax's charisma and constitution scores are only as high as they are because of the ability score increase from being a dwarf, but they could be much higher if optimization was the goal. And this isn't me trying to say optimization is bad. Matt Mercer's Dariax build just shows a different way to approach building a character. It provides an example of using mechanics to reflect and reinforce a character's traits, personality, and history. At the end of the day, there are a variety of ways to build your character for D&D. Whether you like to optimize, or are roleplay focused, or somewhere in between, if you and your table are having fun, that's all that matters. With that said, I want to hear from you. What are your favorite unconventional character builds? Let me know down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, and if you want to see more content like this, I drop a video every week, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you want to check out more character builds I have done, I have a playlist for you on the screen or in the description below. Alright, I'm out of here. Have a good one.